everyone who has been a mother to anybody, which counts for all of us, those that hearts are broken because they can't have a child of their own. Today, we celebrate mothers and thank you for all of you that have cared for another and have been a mother to someone in your life. Um, as we go through some of the announcements this morning, I want to just highlight a few. First, we're going to remind you that we're going to go dinner together, not this Thursday, but next. So that dinner together is going to be a meal, a pork roast. So next Sunday, there will be packages, complete packages with the meat and the seasoning. If you might be willing, and please do, um, to make that at home and then bring it for dinner together the, that Thursday. So it's a week from this Thursday. We really need some more helpers with dinner together. We have great community support. We've had the Girl Scouts, we've had the Boy Scouts, we've had um, just lots of people that outside of the church, but this is our way of showing our love to our neighbors. So I would really encourage you to consider giving maybe an hour or two on our dinner together night. It's only once a month and we would really appreciate that. It is an exciting week because on Wednesday, we will be going to the Skyline Middle School Baccalaureate service. And that will be, um, it's hosted by the Ministerial Association. This is the first year that Front Royal Presbyterian is offering a scholarship to both one Skyline graduate and one Warren County graduate. And so on Wednesday, Ruth and Alex will present with Miss Ava, because it is in honor of Ava, two students. So let's just celebrate our graduates. And I am really pleased that our church has chosen to invest in them. We do have our purses with a purpose, and Sally is not here. But if you're not aware of what that is, purses with a purpose, if you have some old purses around, not big ones, not tiny ones, just a good solid size one, fill it with items of that somebody on the street, homeless, might need. Basic items, toiletries, just put those in the purse, donate your purse, and we're gonna give those out through Warren County Social Services. We continue our love lessons, lunch lessons and love every Tuesday at noon, and we've had quite a, an eclectic response, I have to say. Uh, the three that we've done, we've had three different groups of people each time. So we're having a lot of fun with that. If you're available on, on Tuesdays at noon, just grab a lunch and join us. It's really a wonderful time of sharing God's word together. Any other announcements, Miss Misty? Have I missed? No? Yes, Debbie. Oh, well. Somebody, okay. So if anybody, mother needs a new car, see Debbie after worship. It's a nice Ford, she says. If you're missing your keys, you might want those or congratulate Carrie on a new car. So my friends, let's join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and wonderful, merciful, loving, forgiving God. You have called us here today to celebrate. And so as we join together, you would have us call you father, but as parent, you are also mother, caring for us, tending to our needs, picking us up when we get a boo-boo and welcoming us home when we choose the wrong path. It is you, Lord, that speaks to us in word, in song, in prayer, in actions, and then you expect us to go out and share that faith with others. So as we join in fellowship and worship, Lord, send your spirit to this place and all places where people are gathered in your name through your son. Amen. Good morning. Morning. There is a uh, responsive call to worship if you would uh, join uh, with me in the bulletin. If you arrive here hungry for more of that divine bread which feeds your soul, then I welcome you 
In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall not hunger, and those who believe in me shall never thirst. I invite you now to uh, join in our opening hymn, 521, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart. Let us stand.
Please be seated. I would invite you to return back to the bulletin to find our prayer of confession. Hear now the call. God calls us to faithfulness, yet we so often fall short. Let us approach our God of grace with sincere confession and contrite hearts. Tender, loving God, have mercy on us. Like David, we have been greedy, grasping for that which is ours, even though we have enough. We have forgotten your promise that you will fill us with the bread of life. Like the crowd that followed Jesus to Capernaum, yet did not understand what he had given them, we seek bread for our bodies more than we seek the bread of heaven. Forget our sins, take away our guilt, purge us with hyssop and we shall be clean. Tender loving God, have mercy on us. We gather at the baptismal font, just as we gather at the table showing the sacraments, the signs, and symbols of God's love for us. Though bread and wine are ordinary, so is water. But with God's blessing, we are reborn and given a new life. And we are reclothed in the passion and the love and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is here that we celebrate who we are and whose we are. My friends, know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen like to invite the kids up for the children's message right over here. Good morning. What's wrong? I love your outfit. I think it's adorable. I think it's, what was it? Oh, did you bring my bag up? Oh man, can a choir member get me the basket for four cents a meal while we're doing the children's sermon, please? That's Christian. So guys, Today is Mother's Day, isn't it? Yes. What is your favorite meal that your mom makes? Well, I don't really know. What is your favorite meal that you like to eat? Thank you. I like snacks for dinner. Snacks for dinner. Cecilia, what's your favorite meal? You don't know. What about you? You don't know? How about Brussels sprouts, liver, and onions? Ew. No? How about pizza? Yeah, yeah fried chicken. Yeah. You, uh, you're doing some dancing. Well, today, look at what do I have here? Bread. And it's just regular bread. In fact, look, it came from Martin's. It's nothing special, is it? No, you can't get the whole thing in your mouth, silly. So what do we eat bread for? You can have some if you want some. Tear some off. Can I have one? Yes, everybody can tear some off. What do, oh, what, what? Hard. <laughs> is it, it, hard it's hard, thing. yeah. Do you want some, Cecilia? So what, what, what does bread do for us? You eat it, did you get some? Yeah, do you want some, Camden? No, oh, you can have, a, wait a second. Bread fills our bellies, doesn't it? Huh? You can make peanut butter and jelly with it. You can make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with it. What else could you do with bread? Could you turn it into garlic bread? That's my favorite. Garlic oh, yeah. cheese bread. Make a sandwich. Actually, instead of in pizza, pizza, you could cut it in slices and make some pizza. That's a good one. Yeah, Christian likes that one too. Instead of, uh, instead of um, actually, um, oh, I that, just, it's okay. So instead of actually, um, snacks for dinner, I like steak. Ooh. Steak, garlic bread, and. Oh, wow, that sounds yummy. So all of these things, food and bread, they just fill our tummy, don't they? So we're not hungry anymore. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Could we live without food? No. No? You mean we really need it? Okay. We need, so We need about five. Four, four, 
five things that you need about mm -hmm. five things. You need some things. One is, Jesus said, this is a hard one. He was telling his, his disciples and his followers, he was saying, okay, you can, you don't want that? Okay. Um, and he was telling them that, yeah, we all need bread, but I have something better to offer than just bread. And it's not pizza. Sorry. It's not steak. It's not, not hot dogs. It, what is it? It's not ice cream either. He says, all of these things are good and wonderful, but I am the bread of life. <gasps> Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Not silly, because we're not bread, are we? He's saying, you need me, because we have bread and things to fill our bellies, right? I could turn into a hedgehog. But when you believe in Jesus and you go beyond just your belly, God has something greater to offer you than just in just a minute. I know. It was a lot of fun. More fun than me. I get it. He says that um, the bread satisfies your belly, but God satisfies your heart or soul. So there's more to life than just food when you find your way with Jesus. Do you guys believe that? Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Can you, can you pick that one up for me, Charlotte? Let's have a prayer together. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you, and I love you, and we give you thanks for our friends and family and mothers and life eternal with you. Amen. Now we need to, you were playing with the bread, we need to collect our four cents a meal. Thank you, Cecilia actually right there and how do we say thank you when people come up remember can you yep you that's perfect you guys stand right front each of you can hold one and use your thank you sign when somebody comes up because this feeds people that are hungry you can stand right there if you have four cents a meal offering you may bring it forward now i know i always forget so i gave it to christian can you go, go stand and say thank you can you do that can you say thank you to them as they put money in it's okay, you don't have to have money. God loves you no matter what, you know that? No, you can tell people thank you though. What do you think? Did I get? No? You're, I'm going. Well, I'm glad you're excited about seeing the food because I think she's pretty cool too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's give thanks to God. Lord, it is you that provides for our every need, our hungering and our bellies, as well as our souls. May this go to feed those that are hungry, not only to fill their growling bellies, but to find peace and life eternal in you. Through your son's name, amen. Okay, now you guys can go with Miss Ava. I know that's much more exciting than me. I'll take it. Thank you very much, Kendi. As we prepare to go to God in prayer, um, I have a few prayer requests here. Wyatt Lamb, and we mentioned him, I think, two weeks ago, is a high school student, freshman, correct, Misty? Excuse me? Sophomore, who was just diagnosed with leukemia. And so that is uh, earth-shattering for everybody in the family. Um, and we have a message that Kathy Atherton and Donna Clark have also both been diagnosed with cancer. So I want to ask if there are any other prayer concerns or praises that you'd like to bring before the Lord this morning. I'd like to praise God for this gorgeous day after the rainy one yesterday. So my friends, as, oh yes, Jake. Ah, uh, and her name? <laughs> Emma is brilliant because she went to JMU and finished. The best school, right, Zach? That's right. Absolutely. 
and we do celebrate with all of our graduates. I've enjoyed seeing them all. And uh, we also celebrate with Rossi, Jacob's friend here. She graduated from High Point. So all of our graduates, we are thankful for your dedication and commitment. We can't wait to see how you change the world. As we go to prayer, we're also gonna prayer, have our prayer of dedication for our offerings. So at that time, after I pray during the offertory, if you'd like to bring your offering forward, you are invited to do so. If you're not comfortable walking up, that is not a problem. There's some in the back, and I know that some people give online. So just know that all gifts are dedicated and used to the service of God alone. Let's go to God in prayer. We give you great thanks, Lord, today for the gifts that are around us. Not only our family, but the gift of health and life. We give thanks to you for this gorgeous and beautiful day where we get to celebrate your son, Jesus Christ, and his impact in each one of our lives. We celebrate Emma and Rossi and all of those that have just graduated college. We ask your blessing on them as they go out into the world and change it for the better. We ask you, Lord, in your mercy to be with those that are grieving still. We ask you to be with those that are caught in a deep darkness of depression. We ask for you, Lord, to give courage to those that need it, hope to those that seem hopeless, love to those that feel unloved. And we lift up to you, Lord, for healing Wyatt Lamb, Kathy Atherton, and Donna Clark. We lift up all of those that are in your care and under hospice care. We ask your hands to be the hands of the nurses, the doctors and caregivers as they care for their loved ones. We give thanks, Lord, that we have the opportunity to gather in worship, the opportunity to lift all of who we are up to your glory. And as we re return these tithes and offerings to you, Lord, we ask you humbly to bless them and use them to your glory alone through your son's holy and precious name. Amen. seated. On this uh, Mother's Day, the first scripture reading comes from the book of Exodus, but I sure hope that uh, none of the mothers out there get uh, any crazy ideas or put two and two together. Um, us uh, menfolk couldn't keep it together without you. So. Hear now the word of the Lord. 
The Lord said to Moses, Cut two tablets of stone like the first, and I will write upon the tablets the words that were on the first, which you broke. Be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me on top of the mountain. No man shall come up with you, and let no man be seen throughout all the mountain. Let no flocks or herds feed before the mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the first, and he rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. And he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord said, Observe what I command you this day. Behold, I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither you go to, lest it become a snare in the midst of you. You shall tear down their altars, and break their pillars, and cut down their asherim, for you shall worship no other god. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. And when they play the harlot after their gods and sacrifice to their gods, and when one invites you, you eat of his sacrifice, and you take of their daughters for your sons, and their daughters play the harlot after their gods, and make your sons play the harlot after their gods. You shall make for yourself no molten gods. The feast of unleavened bread you shall keep. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you at the time appointed in the month Abib. For in the month Abib you came out of Egypt. All that opens the womb is mine, all your male cattle, the firstlings of cow and sheep. The firstling of an ass you shall redeem with a lamb, or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. All the firstborn of your sons you shall redeem, and none shall appear before me empty. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In plowing time and in harvest you shall rest, and you shall observe the feast of weeks, the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Three times in the year shall all your males appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Note in your bulletin that the congregation is invited to sing. Um, I've got to, oh, well, there you go. You got it. <laughs> congregation is invited to sing on the last phrase of each verse, which repeats the words and melody.
Well, I have just noticed um, that we have a little faux pas, and I will take all the blame, Zach. The passage of scripture for Exodus was to be the manna and quail that fell from the sky. So remember that it was a good one. It talked about unleavened bread. We learned a lot about the feasts and all of that. So it was my mistake. I put the wrong um, information in the bulletin, so it's not on Zach. It's on me. Let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are seeking out your voice. We come maybe just because our bellies are growling. We come and complain because, well, we keep getting the same manna every day. We come for all sorts of reasons, Lord, but you invite us to eternal life. You promise us something better. So, Lord, on this Mother's Day, we celebrate all of who we are in your name. We celebrate mothers that have no children and their heart aches to carry a child of their own. We celebrate mothers that are entirely too busy and have too many kids to some days. We celebrate, Lord, people that care for children that are not their own. Foster parents, step parents, aunts, Grandmothers who are now raising a child yet again, unexpectedly. We praise you, Lord, for the love of mothers, for those that are mothers-to-be, for those that are mothers of grown children, for those that care for children with special needs, not only in their early days, but throughout their entire life. We celebrate, Lord, mothers that give sacrificially, that give their love without question, that love beyond anything we can begin to imagine, that feed us not only with bread, but the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, through whose name we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So if you'll remember with me that passage of scripture about manna in the wilderness, what you will remember is that, that the, they were in the wilderness, the Israelites had fled Egypt, they're in the wilderness, they're hungry, and so Moses called and prayed, and every morning they woke up, they'd walk out, and there would be some sort of substance that they would pick up, and they called it manna, and there would be quail. So for 40 years, that is what the Israelites ate. If they kept it and they were greedy overnight, it would spoil, but miraculously they could collect enough on the day before Sabbath to last for the next day. So we all know that passage of scripture, sometimes we just need a little refresher. Now this is the Gospel of John, chapter six, verses, um, we're gonna start at verse 22. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not gotten into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill with all of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to them, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness as is it written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. My friends, the prophet Isaiah tells us the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I got to thinking that maybe like the disciples in our passage, it's time for a miracle, right? There is so much going on in the world. It is time for a miracle. For example, our dinner together program we serve with the Baptist, Lutheran, uh, Episcopalians and Presbyterians has been seeing up to 90 to 95 walk-ups per night. Add 65 meals that we deliver. It's about time we got a miracle because it's hard it's about time God gave us some sort of peace that doesn't divide us, but brings us together. Anybody else agree? It's time for a miracle. The world is falling apart. So when we look at the miracles, and of course the disciples have all sorts of questions about them as well, do we look at them and explain them away? Are they just stories trying to explain a concept? For, for example, Jesus walking on the water is the passage right before in John today. Was it just a sandbar? Was it just, just shallow water that allowed him to walk? When he multiplied the loaves and fishes, and that passage is just before walking on the water, 
Was it really a miracle of making bread and fish out of nothing? Or was it a sacrificial sharing and opening of hearts that allowed everybody to have enough? And so we explain away the miracles. And we want more. And the same with the manna in the wilderness. Think about that manna. Do you know what manna actually means in Hebrew? This is actually funny. It actually means, what is it? Because that's what they asked all the time. What is it? So manna means, what is it? And so what is it? We don't quite know, but the best guess, and you're going to love this, the scientists have come back because it still happens in the Middle East today. That substance that is flaky and full of protein and sugar that they gathered in the morning, the best example for it is that it is a bi digestive byproduct of a bug. Digestive byproduct of a bug, which is another name for, yes, gross. What is it? Wow. So when we look at that, we've just explained it away. Does that make it not a miracle? Is it just bug juice? You thought your meals were boring. For 40 years, they ate manna and quail. And I bet you complained last night, chicken again. <sighs> Ask yourself, have you ever been in that wilderness? Because that's where the Israelites were. They were in a wilderness, and I want you to think about your own life, because wilderness is a place in between where you can't find answers, where you're constantly asking what is going on, what is it? That wilderness is where the Israelites are, and I want to ask you, where is it for you when you hunger for something more, when you need something more? When you feel like the world makes absolutely no sense. When you wake up in the morning and just have to force yourself out of bed. When you have no clue how one foot is actually going in front of the other. All you want to do is just sleep in a darkness. Have you ever been in that wilderness? That's where the Israelites were. And sadly, I'm guessing, my, like myself, you've been there as well. And that place is not a place of just hungering for bread. It's a hunger for something else. Now, it seems that the crowd today is not really in that place. The crowd that Jesus is talking to, remember, it's important that, to, that just before Jesus had fed the 5,000 plus by the sea. And after he does that, now we get this passage that Jesus vanishes. The, it, the scripture says that, that the disciples went in one boat one way and Jesus did not go with them. And so everybody's curious what happened. I don't blame Jesus. Everybody needs a little bit of a mental health break, right? So they begin to seek him out, even though he may need peace. And on this Mother's Day, if you've had children, dogs, cats, any of them, don't they seek you out at all times? Sometimes at the most inopportune times, I know I used to go to the bathroom just to get peace. It never worked. You can't hide. They seek you out. That's what the Israelites are doing. They're trying to find Jesus. And much like a child trying to find the mother, it's usually for something so simple because I need a snack. I'm hungry. The Israelites all of a sudden realized that their bellies were growling. They were hungry. They had been fed an amazing feast a couple days before, and now they're hungry again. They want that feast, and the person that gave it to them was Jesus. So I'm hungry. By logical connection, we need to seek him out. And when they do, Jesus answers in a way that I don't think they understood. Because he spoke of the bread that we eat, the bread that we shared with the kids. It will get moldy and rot. But I want to offer you something better. I want to offer you something beyond just something that fills your bellies. I want to offer you life. 
And the disciples are like, ha, huh, nah, that's great, but I'm hungry now. You know that. Children say it all the time. When's dinner? Two hours. I'm hungry now. We say it all the time. I'm hungry now when we fill our bellies. And that crowd, they just didn't get it. Over and over again, they asked for a miracle. Did you hear that in scripture? Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life. And they're saying, prove it. I want proof. Give us another miracle. Jesus is saying, this is better than the bread that you, you goes moldy and rots. And they say, we're ready for another sign. Give us a miracle. Just like we say as well. The odd thing is, is when you look at it, they're only worried about themselves, that growling belly, that need, and I hope you hear it. And there's a parallel, there's a very strong parallel. When do you go to God in prayer? When do you honestly open your heart up to God in prayer? Oftentimes it is when your soul is empty. Oftentimes it is when you are most hurt, most broken. And that's good. But just like the crowd that day, if that's all we seek, then we have lost the entire image of God as the bread of life. And Jesus sees that. He knows it. He actually claims that they're opportunistic. He says, you don't come to me for anything but food that fills your belly. So he's almost insulting them. Come on, guys. There's more to life. And from here on, things only get worse. They only get worse. You're only here because you want another miracle. That's what they asked for three different times. Like when we hurt and when we're lost and when we grieve, that's when we go to God. Seek God. We seek God oftentimes only when our bellies and souls are empty. We are the crowd. And so they also want more proof when Jesus says this. And of course, as soon as he says, this is the bread of eternal life, and he holds in front of them the shiny apple, the nectar of the gods, the best meal, right there. All you have to do is believe. And what do they say? What do we have to do to get this? Because I need some direction. What work do we need to perform to get this? I'm sure Jesus said that, but thought is like, oh my gosh, these people are so stuck. Their bellies are so hungry, but their souls are hungering more. All you have to do is believe, Jesus says, that I am God. But it's hard. It's so hard. It's as if you've just been told that you were diagnosed with a terminal illness. There is no hope. You have so many days. So you are resigned to that. And then you go back to the doctor a week later, and he says, the test results were wrong. You're not going to die. We made a mistake. It's hard to believe that, isn't it? It's hard to just believe it is one of the hardest things that we can do because we are always going to have doubts. We are always going to want more. And God and Jesus are saying in this passage, hold on, there's more to life than just physical bread. But the disciples, the crowd, they want something different. I want to share with you, Mike actually spent 12 years in Germany and he's always bragging about how good the food is there. It's kind of an insult because I'm a good cook. I've made him like southern jambalaya, and Jesse even said it was really good coming from Louisiana. So it's good. I make homemade spaghetti. I make shrimp scampi. My lasagna is on point, isn't it, Ruth? And he's always complaining that it's not Germany's food. And so when we went to Philly, I sought out a restaurant that served donor meat, which is his favorite thing in the world. He talks about it, his mouth waters, he's all excited. So I found this restaurant in Philly and pull up to it. It's in Chinatown of Philly. It's on a corner. We sit down and they bring me that donor sandwich and I've never seen anything like it. My mouth watered. It was three meals worth of meat. And all of a sudden I realized, wow, there is something better. Because we fill our bellies with tasteless 
fast food, don't we? Not Chick-fil-A, because that's awesome. We fill our bellies with tasteless food that just gets us to the next meal. We fill our bellies with preservatives and all sorts of things. We fail to recognize that there is something better. The reason the food in Europe is so much better is because they have tiny refrigerators, so they shop every day for fresh ingredients. They're not hoarders like us. How many, how many freezers do you have in your house? How many refrigerators? How many pantries full of food? Me too. I call it my mana insurance just in case. When it's on sale, I buy 10 of them. You too? And that's a lack of trust, isn't it? Yes, it's thrifty and wise, but there's a lack of trust in that. Because then we're saying, God can't feed us. And Jesus is saying, why settle for just tasteless food? Why settle for just life? When you can have the bread of life, you can have so much more. And Jesus compares it to the manna in the wilderness. He says, you guys gave Moses that, that, you know, um, that, that, what's the word I'm looking for? You gave Moses that, come on, what's the word I'm looking for? You gave all the glory to Moses. You told us that you thought it was Moses that gave you the manna, but it was bread from heaven. And what I'm offering to you today is so much more. But they believed in that manna. That was their story. It's who they were. And Jesus is saying there's more. It's hard to believe. It's hard to grasp. Because we can't see it and we can't prove it. And our bellies are empty and our souls are even more. The bread of life. Each one of us overindulges in all the other things trying to fill that hole, and nothing fits. It's just flour and yeast mixed with water and some sugar, maybe. I don't know, flour, yeast, water, sugar, salt, and it's all mixed together and kneaded and baked. But there is so much more. And I love that Jesus uses these basic elements that we find in everyday life to offer us life eternal. And this bread of life is that promise. If your world is reeked with anxiety, this Jesus can offer calmness and peace. If you are overwhelmed with guilt and feeling weighed down, this bread of life can give you forgiveness, can take sadness to joy. It can give your hollow life a purpose. It can make death into eternal life. In the same light, manna, God's unwavering mercy, is what I'm speaking of. It often happens smack dab in the middle of your wilderness. In your wilderness, we feed ourselves with tasteless food. We, in that wilderness, we get stuck in where we are. And when we get stuck in that place, we just keep eating all of that which is tasteless, that offers us nothing. Now the beauty is, and it sounds odd, that in that wilderness, one day, you'll wake up and there's no manna outside your door. One day, you'll wake up and recognize that you have seen something better. The Israelites for 40 years were camped out and waiting. They wanted to cross the River Jordan into the Promised Land. So finally when the manna stopped, and it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing, they were able to step into the life God promised. Manna. What is it? Bug juice, tasteless wonder bread, McDonald's nuggets, whatever it is you'll get to the point where you won't need it anymore. And that's when you will see the better life on the other side. You'll recognize the bread of life and cross over the Jordan. That's the beauty of manna. Manna sustains us, but God is telling us there is so much more. Just believe. 
And you don't need miracles. Because to be honest, can't miracles just be a change of heart? Where God changes one's heart? Can't miracles be when you finally find peace over grieving? Can't miracles be when doctors discover drugs that can heal illnesses? Miracles happen all the time. And God's hands are in them if you believe and want to see. Water, yeast, flour, salt, a little sugar, flesh, and blood. Very easy ingredients. Very ordinary. They are the best. Because this is the God of surprises. This is the God that you don't know what he's going to do next. He offers mercy instead of justice. He offers condemnation. When there is condemnation, he offers forgiveness. And I will ask you how worried you are yesterday, today, and tomorrow over your growling bellies, hungering physically for more. Well, there's something else. Because as we want Jesus to come down and just shake up the world and calm all of it and make it all peaceful, Jesus is saying, no, I'm going to change humanity one heart at a time. And it's going to begin by offering you the bread of life, life eternal. Come, believe, eat, enjoy, praise. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And amen. I'd like to ask Lee, if you don't mind, to go find our children because they're going to be helping with the benediction. And we're going to join together in hymn 2260 in the thin blue hymnal as we sing praise to God. Let us stand. Oh
dost me wine, love freely poured. Let us be one in the I'm going to ask our children to come forward to help me with the benediction, if you would, and stand right up here so everybody can see you. And as Ava said, you to stand up there. Oh, wow. I'm going to hold my microphone so that you can speak and everybody can hear you. <laughs> Get your car. Did you guys have fun with Ava? Yeah? And everybody's ready to, 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 so they have, the benediction is about moms. Um, my, I love you. She lets me play Nintendo Switch. She gives me good snuggles. She lets me watch YouTube. She's nice, she's kind, she's smart, and she loves me. Thank you, Mom, and I love you. I love my mom because she makes good food. Oh. I don't, I don't care. What, 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 just tell us what you love your mom about. What you have, what, why you love your mom. You know the way you learn? Yeah. She's kind. She's kind. She's pretty. She loves, she loves me. I love you. You ready? Okay. Okay. Thank you. She's nice. I love her. She's good at cooking. And I like when she takes me to the park. Ha! <laughs> we, we are all thankful for mothers, those that care for us, even when they don't have to. So my friends, go. Know that there is a life better for you out there than the tasteless food of today. Go in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. You may remain be seated for the postlude or you may recess.